right, let's talk about house music drums. I'm gonna be going through a couple of different genres uh, because the, the, the percussion does differ for each subgenre of house music and they do overlap for some genres too. So first we're gonna be talking about future house, deep house, tech house. These drums are pretty similar because of one main thing, swing. Now you could choose if you want to add swing or not. It would add a lot of groove, which is important for these genres especially. Um, but if you don't want to, you don't have to have swing. That's the main difference and the hi-hats too. Let's just get started right away. And, uh, here's what it sounds like. Alright, so you kind of get the idea of what's going on. Um, I'm just going to be going through each track individually and explaining it. So first we have the kick on the downbeat, simple, and then a top kick layered with it because there's a lot of high end in this track at least going on, so you really need to distinguish that kick with the top kick. Um, third track we have. So as you can see this is offset, um, and this is the swing. I have another little kick, but I EQ the sub frequencies out of it. It sounds like that, but uh, it's important to EQ out the sub. You want to save that for the kick and your bass. So let's move on to the claps. So we have the claps hitting on the two and four of everything, really. If you want to layer your clap, it's going to add a lot more stereo width and frequency distribution. So this is the first one. A snap. I have this clap offset a little bit. You want to offset some of your claps, you don't want them all hitting on the same exact point, offset like a millisecond. Um, now I have this tampering hit on the four of every other measure. And then a clap hitting on the four of every other one that's not the tampering, if that makes sense. Yeah, so this is just little touches that you don't hear it, but you feel it, so it's important. Um, and now we have this reverse that goes up to some of the claps, not all of them. Just kind of a white noise that goes into the clap, as you can hear. Now we have our ride. It just gives it a little extra high end. I think this is a laser effect. I made this in serum. But essentially, you're just taking white noise and your resonance sweeping. That's basically it. And then we have this little hit. This, there's a transient processor in here. The reason why this animation clip is here is so I could save the value because I have the demo of transient processor and not the full version. And you can actually bypass it. You don't need the full version if you could just use automation clips because they save the values. When you load up a project and you have a demo plugin, it's not going to save the values. But if you use automation clips, it actually will. So easy way to bypass that with transient processor. Uh, this is just a hi-hat hitting on the downbeat. We just have this simple transition. Side chain, of course. The crash. Reverse symbol. I have this little fast shaker. Um, I took a shaker loop, uh, put it on stretch mode. Uh, I've rendered this sample out because I used it in a lot of tracks. So, um, but basically, I took a, a shaker and just stretch. I have this, this effect. I'll put this in most of my tracks, this other little thing. Add some unique percussion elements that nobody, you don't really hear in anybody else's tracks. So, so when somebody listens to it and they hear that percussion, that they know it's your track. So it, it's good for branding. It's also just good to develop your own unique sound in general. Sometimes maybe create samples instead of use samples. Um, that's what I did with this Fast Shaker. Various other samples as well. This is just an ambient hit. A little reverse, a glitchy reverse. Just little percussion hits here and there. Um, it helps to have a lot of your percussion in that one phrase playing. So you can kind of hear how it sounds with the other percussion elements. Because you know a lot of these hits by itself sound kind of random and out of place, but uh, it's, it's about the other percussion elements around it that contextualize it. We just have more transition, white noise, I had it cut out over here, so it solos out this re reverse bass line. Um, 
I'm not going over how I sound design this. It's pretty much the bass, but every patch of the bass has however many milliseconds more attack than it normally would, so it kind of delays the uh, the peak volume and filter frequency. This is a, just a sample. I did some panning automation. This took a long time to <laughs> to make as it looks. Um, and then I guess a filter. Um, that's just a sub drop. And this is a little reverse thing. I'm gonna play with the automation. So there's a high pass, um, low pass, and reverb being automated here. Custom sample. I like to have a little dubstep fills here and there. Uh, this one too. So it glitches. It, it sounds cool with the percussion. Uh, CPU is kind of shitting out, but whatever. You get, you get what I mean. Um, this little hit. You know, it's just there's a lot of miscellaneous, just random stuff that you want to put in, and make sure that you have your entire percussion loop playing, like so, so you can hear where you really want want to put these. This one's got a filter without it, or without without the EQ in general. It sounds all the low frequencies, but this is being automated to let the low frequencies in. And then this is another little reverse transition being automated with filter and volume. All right, now let's go through the hi-hats because. The hi-hats are pretty important, really important. So first we have this sh shaker. Um, and you can't, again, you can't really hear it, but once I solo it out and play it, you'll be able to hear it. And this goes under the hi-hats. So without it, the hi-hats would sound like this. It's a nice layer to go under the hi-hats. You can see it really adds a little, uh, a little extra groove keeps that loop in motion. Um, and this is side-chained, the shaker loop. And then, as you can see, these hats, uh, some of these hi-hats are offset. You need to be familiar with what swing looks like. And so, example right here, if I had that straight, okay. Now, if we took the beats that would normally hit on the two and the four, and offset them by uh, on the grid by let's see one two three four five six I like to do there we go um, that's swing you need to be familiar with that and line your percussion elements accordingly it's going to give it a lot of extra groove especially if you're making future house deep house and tech house especially which is almost all hi hats because in a lot of tech house uh, that's the main thing going on in the high end uh, not the lead but the hi hats and the percussion make sure you add swing or if you don't want to add swing at least be familiar with it in case you do want to add it that's about all for the future house percussion so this project is progressive house and i'm going to show you guys how the drums look for it but first i'll play the pattern So right off the bat, we noticed that the, the drums are more continuous. There's less cuts in the, um, the melody chords and bass lines. So there's less cuts in the percussion. It's, it's, it flows, it's continuous. Um, that's how most of this main stage music is. So I guess first we'll start off right away with the kick. So um, this kick has a lot fatter of a transient, longer of a transient than in, um, than in most of my other projects. Now, you could choose however long you want your kick to be, but in most of my Future House projects and uh, Future Bounce projects especially, I like to have a tight kick with a tight transient so I can really get crazy with the bass line. You want to leave the transient in Progressive House because that's the festival style. I mean, do your own thing at the end of the day, but this is just uh, the trend that I tend to notice. Then we have 
this little fill, which is this, this, and that. And they sound shitty alone, but together, it sounds pretty cool, especially the kick. Um, now we have the claps to layer the high end with the kick. There's no top kick in this, but it's just the claps. You can have a top kick if you want. And then this little dubstep fill. I love doing that. I, I love adding little dubstep sounds here and there. That's just, uh, I don't know what I like to do. Get creative, you know? Um, we have a reverse snare. And then a reverse snare that goes into an actual snare. This little fill. We have these stabs, these hits. These transitions are right here. Not even transitions, just little reverse vocals. Side chain, of course. All right, now let's go into the second part. So now we have this top rod, the lower rod, with the claps and the kick. You can hear how full that sounds. Two layers of little percussion heads. The first one's just, I don't know, this. The second one's a ton. And yeah, kind of keeps that groove going. But notice how uh, Progressive House is straight. It's not swung at all. So this is on, this is right on the, on the grid. It's not offset at all. And you really don't have to worry about that swing in Progressive or Big Room House. It's not supposed to be that way. You can add it if you want. Always get creative, but usually not. And yeah, the drums for Progressive House are a lot more simple than other genres. So. Because uh, you're really trying to emphasize other things in the percussion. But th yeah, this is basically how it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you found this useful. And check out my other links. I post mainly on TikTok. I'll leave the link down in the description. And uh, if you guys like this and like the music, uh, check me out on Spotify, SoundCloud. I'll leave all my links in the description. And um, I'm going to start posting on here more probably every week because I do need to save time to make music and TikTok so that I post daily on there. But... Yeah, I'm going to start trying to post more consistently. Peace.